ask the white question. We're going to scream out with each other. Do I get to? <laughs> do I get to pick who asks me questions? <laughs> oh May I ask the first question? <laughs> yes, ladies first. Oh my goodness, thank you. So the dust has settled. The welcome back parties are over. You know, like how is that moment like? You know, is this kind of like the defining moment of your? talk about how that naturally with Darby. Like, I just want to hear it all, and I know this was such a huge moment. Well, it's all downhill from here. <laughs> um, I feel like I had two comes back, comebacks, right? There's the one at the United Center, uh, and it was, you know, that's, that's all fine and good, but there was really a hurdle to jump and to see if I could still, you know, get it done in the ring, if I ever could, you know? Um, so I, I, I feel like, uh, I don't know, I feel like we accomplished that. Um, so it's it's on to the next one, and I, to me, uh, I, I feel great. I, I feel like I just wrestled my first match in seven years, um, but it's a lot like a lot of the training I do in combat sports, and you know, um, I I feel good. I, I'm, I'm happy. You know, I, I think that's the big thing that kind of resonates through all this, right? Like I'm just. Uh, I understand it, it's a, it's a different you know CM Punk and some people might you know well, oh where's where's angry Phil I, I got fuck all to be angry about right now man I'm just I'm just happy and uh, I think people are happy that I'm happy so I'm just gonna kind of ride that wave you know I, I I'm still high as a kite and I probably will be um, and I'll, I'll let you know when I'm not here. <laughs> Thank you. you talked about um, Terry Funk and watching him and how much he's like kind of influenced you. Um, and then him going into ECW and stuff like that, kind of redefining himself with like just like the new look kind of thing, and being kind of player coach, you can do like slap shot and ready done lots and stuff. How do you feel? Like, do you kind of channel him a lot with Terry Funk and what he's kind of taught you? Throughout? I, I I think you know I don't I don't think Terry Funk gets the credit for being you know the wrestler he was. I don't think a lot of those guys do, but I, I also think it's a generational. Thing. There are very few people who were wrestling fans um, while certain people were hot you know i mean how many people in this room have ever seen terry funk wrestle live <laughs> okay so there's a few of you but how many saw him wrestle live when he was terry funk i'm talking like end of <laughs> i know i know you're really dating yourself but <laughs> you know and, and i i think there's a lot of people out there that you know don't think I'm shit, and I think that makes my job a lot easier going forward because uh, you know I, I know who I know who I am, and it's fun to be able to remind people. Uh, so, um, what's next now for you? I mean, you're going to be a full-time pro wrestler. Are you going to work behind the scenes with the new generation? Do you think you have been an influential guy now that we are seeing Adam Cole and Brian Danielson now in the in AEW? That's a question for them. I'm not going to sit up here and tell you that I'm influential and I'm great. And, uh, you know, I was always just a kid who loved pro wrestling and I wanted to do it. And, you know, let, let's see how far we can we can take it. And somewhere along the line, you know, uh, it, it wasn't fun for me anymore. And, you know, when you're on the road half the year, over half the year, like not enjoying what you do, um, takes its toll mentally and physically. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm stoked that I'm in a place now where, you know, I don't gotta race to the next town and, and wrestle the next day. So if I am sore, banged up, I get to rest, I get to chill. I mean, thankfully I live here, I get to drive home and hang out with my wife and my dog. So that's probably the, the best part. Yes? Um, first off, congratulations on, a, congratulations on a great match tonight. Well, thank you. And my question is, now that you've beaten Darby, what is your next opponent that you're going to be trying to face? I, I, I don't know. Um, I don't have any plans. Uh, my, my next opponent is my dog at home. I got to take him on a walk and make sure he doesn't try to, try to bite anybody. But I, I'm honestly kind of flabbergasted at the amount of talent in this locker room. I, you could put it up there with some of the, the more ridiculously stacked rosters of any era and you know in different different years but like there's there's tons of people i, I want to get in the ring with i've talked about it ricky starks hobbs um pillman jr grip too you know those guys are in tag teams i guess i have to find a tag partner if i want to you know mix it up with them but jungle boy uh, obviously adam cole obviously daniel bryan i've never wrestled kenny omega i've never wrestled the young bucks the, the sky is the limit
Play Funk. talked a lot about, you know, the, some of the talent that you've been wanting to work with. You just mentioned some right now. So being in the ring with Darby here today, what was the most surprising or unexpected that thing that you learned while being in the ring with him? Oh, gosh. Um, I don't really know if anything was unexpected. I mean, I knew who I was getting in the ring with, you know. Um, there, there was a reason that he was the first guy I came back to wrestle. There's, you know, there's something about him. Um, he's different. He's good. Uh, and in the hierarchy of AEW, it wouldn't make any sense for CM Punk to come right in and go after Kenny Omega. Doesn't mean that Darby is any less talented. It's just if there is a hierarchy of wins and losses and where people are. Um, I, I thought Darby was, uh, you know, was a great start because he's a great opponent. He's the fans love him, and I thought that we did a great job of not trying to sway that. Hopefully, um, you know, to me, pro wrestling is the best when everybody involved in something comes out looking better. You know, and uh, hopefully we accomplish that tonight. So how do you feel about, oops, sorry, how do you feel about Daniel Bryan and Adam Cole being with AEW now? What's that mean to you? I mean, I got to, well, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> sorry. sorry, buddy. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, pard pardon my lewdness. I got a boner for that. <laughs> That's fine. That's honest. You know, That's great. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, honestly, like, uh. You know, I, I feel everybody has their own journey and their own story and their own experiences where we used to work. And, you know, uh, but I heard him say it, you know, like I, I left and I don't got a lot of good things to say. He left and he says he loved the place. But what does it mean when you love that place, but you still don't want to be there? You want to be here. I think that speaks volumes. Um, Adam Cole is a guy that I've never wrestled. With. I know I'm going to sometime. Um, I look forward to it. Daniel Bryan is a guy I have wrestled, and I, I feel like uh, that's somewhere down the line too. It's just, it's literally, it's, it's. I'm a kid at Christmas, you know. I, I, I unwrap a gift. I don't know what's in it. It could be Adam Cole, it could be Daniel Bryan, it could be Kenny Omega, it could be the Young Bucks, it could be Will Hobbs, it could be Ricky Starks. I mean, it's just endless. I, I I'm so happy right now. Did Rock you get any feedback from Tony or anybody else about the the Daniel Bryan reference in your promo a couple weeks ago? Uh, no, 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 that was, uh, I, I, I think you saw me live go, ooh, maybe I shouldn't have. Yeah. <laughs> maybe I shouldn't have said fine. that. Um, oh, it was fine. Uh, <laughs> I'll it's run in from time. I think, I think I didn't remember immediately, and then I ran back a couple matches later, and I was like, oh, well, yeah, I think I mentioned it. Anyway. it was fine. And he was I told like, him, I think it's going to be okay, man. <laughs> I think we've been doing a good job with really poorly kept secrets. That, you know, like I think the fans here just want to have a good time, so it's it's not so much about trying to shuck somebody into the, the in the back door, you know, in a, a, draped in a curtain and you know hide them from everybody. But uh, I, I think we do a really good job with uh, with surprises. Punk, how much have you spoken to Brian since all this stuff has been going on? I talked to talk? him. No, I, I, I talked to him today. You know what I mean? Like that's it. Like I, 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 I he, I didn't want to reach out to him and be like, hey, I know, I know you're coming, brother. You know, because I, I knew I would see him today and I would talk to him. And I waited until he was, he was, he was done doing his thing, and I gave him a big hug. And it's just exciting. It's just, it, it, it's exciting to, to be here right now. Do you guys say anything to each other during that hug? What's that? Do you guys say anything to each other during that? Yeah, hug? I said good promo. <laughs> <laughs> to both of you guys, uh, we talk all the time about all the Nash and Hogan changing the business in that one moment. Um, we saw one hell of a moment here tonight. What kind of tangible effect do you believe that that will have on the industry going forward? Gosh. Um, obviously, I think it's going to be very impactful. I'm, I'm not personally in the business of a war or competing. I know who competition is and who competition isn't. To me, we focus on ourselves. We focus on the talent we have, and we focus on the people in the building, and I think that's how we grow. It's not about throwing stones, and I know TNT loves ratings, and I know everybody's going to look at stuff and compare the two. For a company that's only been around for two years, I think they're doing great. And if you're competing with somebody on another night that's got a 30-year head start, well, that's fine. But to me, our competition is our audience. And as long as we keep them engaged and keep them happy, and I think that to bring it back around, that's what we're doing. So 
I'm not Hogan, I'm not Savage. You know, Daniel Bryan and Mike and, and, and Adam Cole, they're not the outsiders. I see the parallels. This is totally different, and I'll go ahead and say it, and people can quote me, and they'll be pissed off about it. To me, this is bigger. How would you rate your performance tonight? Or is it really too early? You need to really look back at the match and be like, oh. I, how, would, how would you rate my performance? 10 stars. <laughs> Out of a 10 scale? Uh, 20? Come on. I, in all honesty, I would say an 8, just because it seemed like halfway through the match. No, I'm not being honest, because it seemed like a little bit there. You got a little, you thought you were winning. You've been in the ring in seven years. That's for being brutally honest. Did, did, really, did, like really did it look like I haven't wrestled in seven years? Cardio? Beyond the cardio? No. You look great. <laughs> wow! Okay, Steve. Yeah. Wow, dude. Wow. Thanks. Yes. And uh, you are obviously thrilled every time you come out to the ring. You've got the crowd around you. You're surfing into the crowd, and there's just a lot of joy around. And that extends both from the audience, the kids, and adults, and us, and, and people watching to you. When you're in the locker room, who are you the most happy? to speak with, to learn with, to share your knowledge with, or to learn something new from right now? Uh, everybody. You know, I mean, Sting came up to me today, and, you know, I, I don't think these guys are lying, but Sting was just like, you know, it reminded me, your match with Darby reminded me what Flair did for me. You know, when I, when I went 45 minutes with him with Greensboro, yeah. yeah, I mean, that's a quote from him. And, like, I don't think the dude's going to lie to me. And that means something to a kid like me, you know? Um, Sting and I put together our our segment from Dynamite the other day. And it was just refreshing to have him be like, well, no, what do you think? And I was like, no, what do you think? And we went, you know, we did the respectful thing, and then we came together, and, and I thought... Grew our ideas together and made a pretty good segment. And I, I so I'm learning from Sting, which is wild. And there's familiar faces. There's Arn, there's Dean, there's guys like that that I will always default to. Guys, what do you think? Jim Ross, what do you think? You know? Um, but I do see younger guys defaulting to me. And, you know, I, I, I do think that is a, you know, a lot of people will tell you that, oh, I love the business, but. You know, you got to get back to the business and this and this. I just think it happens organically. If somebody, I'm, I'm here to help somebody if they want the help, um, but I'm also still learning. There was a point where I was like, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not learning anything. This isn't any fun. And that's when you know you got to get out. And now I'm, I'm, I'm back and I'm around creative people that are happy to come to work. And it's, it's, it's a fun, great learning environment. Punk is Tony, Tony, can you believe that you did this? Because you're you're everyone else, right? Only you have money. I'm not. A, I'm not. A, I'm not a. I'm not a White Sox fan. <laughs> That's true. Uh, Tony, I can't. Do you believe you pulled this off? Like you changed the industry. I didn't. It wasn't. It was everyone. I mean, it was everyone, a group of great people, and especially the fans. I mean, it wouldn't have been possible without all of you, all the great wrestling fans that everyone made it possible. But no one. When you look around, you're from this area. When you look around, at what this is. I mean. Do you ever just like smell the roses? You're, no one else could have done what you did. I do. I don't you know, know if that's true. Nobody else. Nobody else could have seen nobody it. Nobody else could have done it. <laughs> 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 that, so that is. That is. That is so then I guess it is. That, that is legit. It's official. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank look, you, Mr. Well, Tony, how are you feeling right now? I've never felt better in my entire life. It's <laughs> the greatest feeling. Yeah. Yeah. I, I never felt better in my entire life. Yeah. 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 Ye
and, and you know this this is one of the best feelings that in the world i can't compare it to anything and it came off perfectly it is whatever the opposite of a letdown is this is the opposite of a letdown thank last, you last, Tony, last, punk, sorry, sorry, punk. Sorry, sorry, last question i would use it for don't ask me ask, ask use it for punk because okay. Tony, can i ask the last question really quick? yeah but ask him because i'm staying she already asked me a question. Oh, then it's somebody else. Punk. Then ask two, it. I'm sorry. I got a Give Punk two more questions. I got a question. Two, two real quick questions. Okay, number one is that what was the day for Dick Frame where you flipped the switch where you decided, I'm going to come? I, I don't know. I, I would have to. There there for sure was a day, but I, I, I'd have to think back on that. But around one, you know, like. You know, I mean, they were in the middle of the pandemic. Uh, I've already said it that. Um, the, the locker room and the situation with Brody Lee's uh, passing, I think, made me really go, oh, that's, I mean, that's different. You know, just people being respectful and tight-lipped about a personal situation where there's kids and a, 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 a life involved. Like, I was just, I was, I was friends with Brody. You know what I mean? So it, it, it's just like, that means a lot. And it goes far with a guy like me who came up in this business and you always hear things like, oh, the boys, their family, it's your family, it's your family. And it's never, ever been like that. People will use that to their advantage and take advantage of other people. And to actually see that, but them not boasting about it, to me, was special. And then you see that and you're like, oh man, maybe there's something to that. You know, maybe, maybe it's not all the negative stuff that I remember from being in a locker room um i'd have to really think but that that was like that was the big one honestly that was the big one because that that you know i remember just texting tony and just being like i'm i'm amazed that this this got out you know like what a what a tragic thing and everybody kept it secret and that that went a long way with me and then one other thing is this is a match that like nobody's really thought of but tonight when you went face to face with sting it's like okay you grew up sting was a big star Things, you know, at, at a certain age, I don't know, but is there something like in a bucket list thing where I'd love to have this on my resume that I once wrestled on a pay-per-view with Sting or I once wrestled in a big match with Sting? Um, it's, it, I've had such, I hate saying the word blessed. I'm not a religious guy. I've had such a, an amazing life where I have found myself in situations where I would just always kind of look around and be like, man, this is wild. And without ever having a bucket list, it'd be hard for me to write things down on the bucket list because I've done so many cool things. But that's, yeah, that's, that's one of them. That's a bucket list thing. It's an item that I never thought I would, you know, because your, your brain doesn't go there. We're never in the same company at the same time. We're two di different generations right. of wrestler. And you just, you never thought it was possible. And now it's just like, it is. And that's kind of how I feel about the entire groundswell of AEW as a whole, you know? Like, you got me and Darby and Sting in a ring, and it's legitimately three different generations, you know? And the, the, the knowledge of wealth he brings, yeah, I mean, it's a bucket list item now. I think for sure down the line we're probably going to tag, you know what I mean? Like, that feels like there's something there. And, you know, there's real organic moments here, like him coming out and shaking my hand. We didn't talk about that. That wasn't a planned thing. He came out and he did it. And before I shook his hand, I looked him in the eye and I was like, this, this means something to a kid like me. And he said, it means something to me too. You know, and that's, that's wild to me. And that's, that's the, the playground we have here where we could do all the, the, the stuff that you didn't ever think possible. Do thank you, thank you. Okay, thank, I, thank you very much. I, I'm staying, and uh, thank okay. you. I just, uh, I would like uh, to publicly in front of everyone say one more time, thank you on behalf of AEW and all the wrestling fans worldwide to you, CM Punk. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Punk. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think that was it. I mean, uh, we've got, we're doing more. Uh, if anybody has any further questions, I don't know if we could take one more. I got one. What? Punk, as someone who loves Chicago as much as you do, you're wearing the stars on your, on your trunks. Yeah. What does it mean to you that Chicago has become one of the hub cities for AEW? Uh, I mean, it, it means everything, you know. Uh, I, I know people groan and say, oh, you, you can't compare him to Michael Jordan. You know what? We sold out the United Center on a rumor. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it, it, if I can toot my own horn, I'm a kid from Chicago, and I, you know, I, I, I don't know if I can claim I sold out this building because I think it was sold out before I was ever announced. 
but I sold out the United Center. I sold out the Rosemont Horizon. Like that's, man, that's super great, and I would like to brag on that, but it's also super humbling for a kid who, you know, I, I was at the first show ever at the United Center, the first ever event, SummerSlam 1994. I watched Brett Nolan in the cage, you know, and for Chicago, I mean, it, it, I, I feel like Chicago has just been ripe for the taking. They just, they, they love wrestling and they want to be entertained. And there's been some great shows here. I was on them. I was on a few of them. And then, you know, I, I, I just feel like we got the pulse of the whole, the whole place, you know? Like to me, I mean, what's next? Wrigley Field, Soldier Field, Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. And you guys. and you guys, uh, thank you all very much. And again, I, I have to say that uh, none of this would have been possible tonight. We, you know, the company had been doing great. We had a lot of momentum. We were very hot. But the person who made uh, us reaching these new high heights, bringing this new interest, and changing our company and changing all of our lives is CM Punk. And thank you very much. No. No, you coming no. here changed all of our lives. No. Everybody in this company, you changed no, it for all no, of us. No. You made it better for all of us. Thank I'm you. I'm leaving. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to introduce.